We're going to take a quick look today at the website of Greg Harding. Greg's a commercial and industrial photographer up in Manchester in the United Kingdom, and he specialises in all sorts of uh, industrial, commercial, healthcare, um, schools photography, automotive, and all the interesting areas of, of photography like that. Now, Greg has got an absolutely fantastic website at the moment. He's done a lot of hard work to this site, and he's built a real wealth of information around his subject matter, which works extremely well for ranking in Google and also providing information that his clients will actually want. So let's have, first of all talk about a few of the, the great things that uh, Greg has done here with his website. Um, We've covered the basics, Greg. You've uh, you've got a, a content delivery system, so which is meaning that your website loads extremely uh, quickly, nice and quickly, and there's good quality images that aren't too pixelated, so they load nice and quickly as well. We've got the SSL certificate up here. We've got the little padlock in our um, address bar at the top here that shows that we've got uh, an SSL certificate, and you know you're, you're taking care of safety on the website. We've got a beautifully clean white website, which is extremely appealing to, to our kind of B2B, business-to-business -to -business customers. So that's working really nice. And the blue that we're using throughout the site as well. Blue's a, a trust colour, so it, it's really um, good, especially in the corporate world, to kind of be using those colours within your branding. Now, one thing you've done really nicely through the site is you've got some very clear call to actions and, and buttons here um, for us. We could make quite a, an improvement through the site by introducing some colour into our headlines to kind of pull our eyes about to, to the messages that, that we're trying to give. And that would improve the, the call to actions a little bit as well. One of the things that you've done really well, you've, you've employed a, an SEO guy in the past, I, I imagine, or you've done an awful lot of work on SEO yourself. And one of the things that is a really good example for other photographers that will be watching these videos will be the internal linking that you've done here. So you've used a, a keyword or phrase and you've linked that off to another page throughout the website, which actually details the same um, subject matter. Now, Google works really well um, at indexing information and the algorithms within Google now have really improved over the last 12 to 18 months. So they work a lot on what's called synonyms. So it can understand the difference between photographer, photography, um, and different spins that we put on the, the word. So it will understand that a portrait and a picture and an image are all around the same subject. So whereas probably two or three years ago, this kind of um, style of, of SEO work um, was really really important we've kind of uh, need to actually be focusing a little bit more back on our conversational quality within our website now so one of the things I found with your website being a photographer it's great to come along here you know I, I can see you've got 10 years experience but these, these first couple of paragraphs here were very for the benefit of a computer reading your site rather than a person rocking up looking for a photographer. So it is actually really, really important that we pay attention to the um, the human aspect of people arriving at our website, because after all, it is a human coming along here. You know, it's in my experience, it's generally a um, uh, an office manager or similar that's or marketing manager that's been given the job to go off and find someone. It's a, it's a human being it could quite often be a, a graduate and if you kind of work all of your marketing to the basis that it's a, the lowest common denominator that you're trying to appeal to and educate about your service, then it's a, a really great way to write the copy on our website. So if you imagine a, a kind of 21 year old uh, graduate has been given the, the job of going off and finding a, a commercial photographer for this job, whether they work in an agency or whether they work for a business, then all of our information on our website needs to kind of be written, be written in a way that we're hand holding taking them through the process helping them understand what they should be looking for um, and helping them understand what's actually involved because nine times out of ten the project get, gets passed up the food chain once they've narrowed down the the initial selection so that's a, a really good way to think about the way that we're writing the copy for our website there's a, a lot of information here and our brain works in a way now that we skim we're used to scrolling through a website, we, we flick our way through Facebook, we flick our way through Instagram. So if we break bodies of text down so that we've got uh, the H1 heading, we'll have some H2 headings down through the page, we can use some bullet points, we can use as many different visual techniques as possible to break this text up so it's easily um, accessible, easily um, absorbable by the person that's looking 
at our website. So we avoid those big chunks of text. We could do something here with some color, A, to break up the, the whiteness of the website. Although it's very clean, we want our website to have a purpose. So the purpose for us is, is one of two things, Greg, and, and I'd look at this from two different directions. We either want them to get straight in contact with us, or is there some way that we could do a downloadable PDF or a um, flip book or something like that that they can access, which will handhold us through the process of uh, getting involved with a commercial photographer. So you might want to have something like a, an ebook here that you can produce. Uh, I know you've got your portfolio down the, the bottom of the page here, but rather than using this portfolio as something that's on LinkedIn, on um, Dropbox rather, why not put it into a flippable PDF, um, something like issue, um, that's I -S -S -W dot com, or Yumpu, which is Y-U-M-P-U dot com, are both flipbook bits of software where you can actually embed that flipbook into a page. So we're keeping them within your site, but we're educating them a little bit more, giving them something to, to look at a bit longer. One of the things that Google really loves is when people dwell on our site, and that's one of the measurements that Google takes. So if people are coming here and they're bouncing very quickly, that's not interacting with your page at all and disappearing, then Google won't rank you as highly. If they're coming to your site and they're spending two or three minutes having a look around, staying on a page, reading something, then Google's going to uh, to raise you through the rankings because it understands that you're giving its customers what it wants to deliver to its customers, which is giving them the right information the first time. One of the other ways of creating that dwell time on pages is by using video. Um, there is some video tucked away in your site, but it's a great way of actually getting people to stop. Bits like the slider at the top here. Um, at the moment, most people won't sit here and wait for the slides to go through. And to be fair with these buttons right out on the far edges, most people probably won't notice that they can click the way through. Normally these, these sliders can give us a breadcrumb um, tab through the middle here, which would show us that there's three, four, five, six sliders to work our way through. So that might be an idea to enable. But as I say, popping some video on here, um, even an introduction video of yourself would make that um, break the ice. One thing I love about video is we kind of have a real struggle at times taking someone from our website to clicking the button to either inquire or coming to our website and getting somebody to actually pick up the phone. There's a real fear of man within people now that we live in this social media world. And if we pop some video in there and they can see that, you know, Greg's not that bad a chap, he, he sounds quite nice on the phone, um, they understand his accent and, and all these kind of things, then it actually removes a, a great barrier to somebody actually getting in contact with us. I've had a quick look onto your YouTube channel and you've actually got some great uh, videos already prepared in the past about some of your video production services. Uploading those to YouTube or uploading those uh, to Vimeo and then embedding them in your site, A, will, will do some, some wonders for your SEO, but B, it will actually get the dwell time a little bit longer on your site as well. So predominantly on the, on the first page here, I would have a look at changing the way that we phrase and build this text up. There's nothing wrong with what's here, but it's not very friendly as a reader. It's, it's been designed for a robot to read to a large extent, I, I feel. So kind of jumbling this text up, making it a little bit customer centric so that you're kind of appealing to them. At the end of the day, especially business to business, we have to understand that our images are here to do two or three things. It's here to help them increase sales. It's here for a corporate brochure to help them, them raise funding and to, to raise money from shareholders. Or it's here as an educational um, aspect if it is uh, for something like the NHS. You know, at the end of the day, we've got to bring that focus to the wording in our website. You know, this is how we help companies increase their spends. This is how we help them sell more money, uh, sell more products. This is how we help schools um, engage with pupils. This is how we help the NHS get their message across, uh, things along those lines. As we come along the header at the top here, we've, we've got our menu bar. And again, at the moment, we've got no clear journey to our website. So we rock up at this page. We've got this heavy bit of text here that says Manchester commercial photographer and industrial photographer producing multi award winning photography. We specialize in, in healthcare, schools, science, architecture, automotive, construction. And by the time I've got to the end of the first paragraph, I feel exhausted. Then I come to the, the menu bar at the top here 
and it is so dry. Now, when it comes to our titles here, the actual title of these does not have to be the same as the actual page title because this is only a menu reference. So we can leave the page titles that are industrial photography or industrial photographer Manchester, however you've written those already, and we can make this menu bar a lot more helpful. So you could be you could have the, the portfolio button or you could rename this perhaps inspiration and then you could have images for automotive industries, images for construction, images for dental and healthcare, um, and you could change it in a way that's a little bit softer and will um, help them to go off and have a look. Now, I'm a really great um, advocate for using case studies, and you have actually got some case studies here, but again, they're hidden away. So I would like to see, especially on this first page, it would be great to see some testimonials on here because the testimonials help uh, build trust in you, show that you've done a good job for somebody else in the past and show that, uh, you know, you're, you're not just a new business that's just popped up. So I would break this text down, rewrite this block, add some testimonials in different fonts, different styles, so they break up the text. I'd also add some more pictures into this page to break things up a little bit more, make this page a little bit longer. Nowadays, we're used to scrolling, so don't be afraid of having a longer page here. This area here at the bottom, we call the, the bottom footer, or we call it uh, the junk drawer. Now, we can move some of the boring stuff, your, your privacy policy, your terms and conditions, and bits like that. Some of this stuff that's not quite so necessary can come down to the, the footer here, and we can really simplify those top buttons. On a sheet of paper, I would literally scribble out what would I actually, if I could have just got four buttons at the top here, what do I want people to look through? So it would be probably be something along the lines of our portfolio, what our customers say about us, how to commission a shoot, and then how to get in touch. And then that would give us a slightly more um, defined route to goal for customers because literally we're just going through those four. The blog, again, can drop to the bottom of the page into the junk drawer down here. We don't need that at the top. But that would focus our, our customer journey along the, the kind of four steps to commissioning you. So we spoke about also putting some case studies into our website. As we click through to the different parts of the portfolio, again, we've got a very, very wordy at the moment. We have to click on each of these shoots to, to get the pictures to come up. So maybe pop some of these into an Animoto slideshow and, and embed that slideshow here via our YouTube or Vimeo channel again. So we've actually got a reason for people to stop and have a look. But I'd also scatter a few of the case studies here. You could have a two or three buttons that say, here's how we helped. Um, here's how we helped a local tire company improve their marketing images and then have a case study all around ski tires or here's how we helped a haulage company improve their web presence and then click off to all this but actually create a destination for people to go and for them to understand where they're going to and why they're going to have a have a look at going back to your um, seo You've done a great start on a lot of the SEO and a lot of the foundations are in place. You mentioned to me that you were concerned that some of your pages were ranking higher than your homepage for certain terms. Now, if I can give you a brief explanation as to, to Google, Google is very much like a library. And if you keep going to the library asking for a book on photography, Google will stock more of that book. In real terms, the more people ask for a site that our site gives the information about, then the more Google will lift you up the rankings. Now, it would be very reasonable that if you wrote a book that had a chapter on corporate photography that was extremely detailed, that was seen as a reference work for university children, for college goers and things like that, that people would be sent to the library to ask specifically for your book because it contains that chapter on construction photography or commercial photography. And that's very much what Google is doing at the moment. If you've got some pages on your site that are, are highly ranked for certain terms, then you'll be seen to the, as the go-to for that term. And that's not something to worry about, in fact. It's actually quite a good thing. Because if you build all of your marketing, your SEO, around the layers of an onion, photography is your core subject, and then all the other specialisms and keywords that you're building on kind of wrap around that onion to create the layers to make the onion bigger and bigger. And that's very much what you've done with your website. One of the tools you can use is 
Google Analytics, and I'm just going to pull over to Google Analytics now. And this is just one of the, the sites that I run. Under Google Analytics, if you drop down the sidebar here to behavior, then we've got another button that says site content, and then we've got landing pages. Landing pages will tell you which pages on your website are the most popular ones for people to land on. So if they popped in a Google search term, and then they've gone off and found your site in Google for a search term, for example, commercial photography, or studio photography, or industrial photography, then the name of those pages will list here. Now I urge you to go off and, and have a look at your Google Analytics, break down these landing pages, look at which is your most popular pages, and then either week by week or month by month, pick up on one of the pages, go off and have a look at it and just add another paragraph of content to it or add a couple of pictures, tweak a few things, just make a few changes. Because every time Google crawls your site and sees some fresh new content there, then Google's going to rank your page higher and higher. And you know that these pages that are ranking already and getting people going to them are actually the pages that they're interested in. So that's why you want to tweak and improve the content you're actually providing for your visitors on those pages. So that was some of the, the key parts as we went through. Again, popping some video onto these portfolio pages, changing it up a little bit as to um, kind of, it would be quite nice. You could go down the page here with some mini case studies, maybe two or three um, different industries that you've worked in. You could then have some more buttons down the bottom here to, to show some different industries. But at the moment, people have got to do a fair bit of work to, to go through and click each of these. and to uh, to have a look through things so something very quick and engaging like a piece of video it can even replicate what's here but it's just going to get people to stay on the the page a little bit longer at the moment some of your page titles um and other seo bits let me just pull up the the back of it. your page title is very long so if you've got a long um the specialist in car photography and car truck photography, you've, you've got to be careful with some of these through the site that some of them aren't clipping. <coughs> Excuse me, that some of these aren't clipping. So if you get an extremely long page URL, an extremely long, long meta description, then they're going to be shortened. They're going to cut information off. But Google's also going to understand that you've kind of gone over those things. So be very careful when you're doing the um, SEO part of these that you're keeping within the, the word limits. But also think that when you arrive in a Google listing for a search term that people are searching for, these two parts here, the page title and the meta description, have got to be the T's that get somebody to click on your site. If you've got a list of 10 other businesses, is getting a free quote for your project a powerful enough marketing pool to actually get somebody to pick you out of 10 others nine of which may say get a free quote or email us for details or take a look so think about some of the the search terms that we will be using as customers but also think about how we're teasing people in to come and take a look um again this is a great example of of you know come and see case studies of other companies we've helped and how we could help you for example something along those lines and showing different bits which will tease people in You've used your H1 and H2 headers. Again, the H1 headers are very much used for, for SEO, but just think about the way that we're writing things on the page so it is a clear message and we are thinking about the actual customer that we're talking to rather than just talking to a Google search engine. So they were equally as important. One of the other things that I'll talk about from an institute point of view is that nowhere on your page here have you got the logos of any of the trade associations that you work with or are registered with or qualified with. Now, my background was electrical engineering. I also had a, a large chunk of time in IT and marketing, and I'm registered still with, with several industry bodies and have a, a string of letters after my name. Now, I may not know exactly what your qualifications are. I may not know exactly the bodies that you're registered with, but if you're working with other professionals that are members of the Chartered Institute of Marketing or similar bodies to that if they're seeing the trade association logos on your page that you're you're part of that you're registered with it gives them a reassurance that you're involved in continuous professional development and it gives them that reassurance that uh, you're actually overseen by a professional body as well uh, and that's one of the reasons i always encourage people uh, another great logo as well is the fsb the federation of small business um 
if you're a member of something like that, always include that logo. It just gives a trust factor to people as well. This search box, I've, I very much doubt people are searching through your site, so I don't think it would be too necessary. But again, these contact details here, I love the uniformity of how they're on every page. We could change the color of the contact us, but we also want to make these easier to be seen. So in a perfect world, I'd make these slightly larger as well, Greg, because at the end of the day, they're coming to our website and we, we need them to have two purposes. They've either got to be giving us an email address because they're signing up to um, a piece of literature or a piece of knowledge that they're taking away, for example, the ebook or the, the PDF. They've got to be giving us a, a phone call or they've got to be dropping us an email via the contact us page. So that's very much my goals for, for a website. The contact us page works really, really well. Again, we could be changing things up a little bit on a page, make the page a little bit more interesting and down the rest of the page. This part here at the top, frankly, is a bit of guff. And the most important thing on the contact page is First of all, that they contact you. Second of all, that they can email you or phone you. If I've got to wade through four pa paragraphs of text, is, is that the most important thing? You know, am I losing their interest by the time that they've got down to the, the bottom of these four pages about how to get in touch? So I'd take a quick look at those, see if there's some ways that you can, can sharpen them up. Again, it could be one paragraph, you know, you can get in touch by such and such. Um, this other text could drop below the below the contact us box because it's less important that they read these three paragraphs than it is that they fill it in. The blog works really, really well for your SEO. Excuse me, the, the blog works really, really well for your SEO. It's not too interesting for the rest of us as it is working at the moment. So we could look to make this uh, featured image ever so slightly larger. And again, if we think people are mainly coming to the SEO, uh, to the blog via um, Google, then we can always tuck the, the blog uh, link right down into the footer, because if it's not our primary resource for people to come to, then let's move it out of the way, because we want them to, to focus on what's going on at the top here. See, this is a page where you've started to use some video. You've showed us about your qualifications. Um, you need to be very clear as to, to why this is important. And I think actually an explain a video is very good way of telling people why all this information here is important to them and what, it, what kind of difference it's going to make to, to having you do their photography. The GHP experience. I love this infographic. Does it need to be on the main header of your page? Probably not. As I say, having a really thorough audit and clearing out anything that's not driving them to, to clicking that contact us button off that top menu bar um, really would be one of my, my first calls. Going back into the SEO, there are a few other areas that I was gonna suggest that you could start to do some, some build up now. Now, I don't know how far you've, got, you've gone with your SEO. There's only so much time that I had to kind of dig around in the background. Um, it looks like you've got the images alt tagged and uh, focused on that way. You've done some great internal linking. You've done some great link building backwards into your site and to external bodies. Again, the industry logos and linking out to, to businesses that are appropriate is important as well. That's going back to one thing I was going to say there. You've got a a client's page, which again was a, a little long winded. I could, you could quite happily break this down into probably eight or 10 sections down the page, a few pictures that you've produced for one of those brands. And, and again, make this again, a little bit more of a, a case study area as to how we've created pictures for Capita, how we've created pictures for Manchester Council, how we've created pictures for the University of Salford. Um, some mini case studies down this page would, would work quite nicely. But one of the other things that we can do with SEO, which you've got the great framework in place for now, and you're, you're so far ahead of most people when it comes to the kind of technical SEO part of your site, is what we can look at, which is called schema. 
now schema and schema markups are areas that are done in the background of our website and they answer questions for google so when you're kind of thinking of content for google uh, for your website starting to think now about the questions that your clients and pr prospective clients are, are, are asking and how you answer them a in your blog post and b on page means that you will start to change the way that you're writing your pages so if we went into google quickly and uh we ask a question like um how much should, how should, should, uh, ask a question here like how much should a commercial photographer cost we start to get what's called snippets here's a, a snippet that's come here and then we've got our knowledge bank which is this area here we click this button here and it starts to tell us information about how much a commercial photographer should cost and then it gives us a load of other questions now a really quick and easy tip for you greg is sit, to sit down think about some of the questions that your clients will be asking go off and google them so you know now that you could write one blog post about how much a commercial photographer should cost and then you've got a list of questions here that people are asking and if you click on that last one up pop a load more questions and if you click this one here you'll get a few more questions pop up at the bottom so all of a sudden you've got about 10 or 15 ways of uh, of questions that people are already searching for on google that you can go off and find at the bottom of the page here it will also give us related searches so these are things that people are already searching for on google on a regular basis so these are some new um, SEO terms and phrases that you might want to be going off and building page content and blog posts around so that you rank higher on Google for your, your preferred search terms. And you can go off and do this with, with anything. Now, when you put the schema markup into place on the back end of your website, which in WordPress you can do extremely easily, then this is where all of this content is pulled for. So for uh, commercial photography guide have set up some schema markup on their pages. So when Google goes through and searches, this content gets pulled in as a block from your website. Works in a very similar way to how we use Yoast or Rank Math or something similar to that in the background of our website to set up our SEO. So that's something that's well worth going and doing. You've got a nice number of pages to your website, so it's going to take you a little while to, to put that into place, but you could do that incrementally, and that's going to give you a little bit of a head start on everyone else in your local area. So one of the last questions that you asked was about canonical links versus redirects, 301 redirects, and it's, it's a subject all about duplicate content and Google doesn't like too much duplicate content, but there are a lot of times where you might write an article and feature some text that has come from another page, either on your website or um, on a blog post or some other part of your site. So if you think about it, going back to your university days, you'd quite often reference different works and then you'd have to put a reference back in the text. So canonical links work like that reference. You turn around in a blog post, if you copied, for example, this paragraph here that says with more than 10 years experience, blah, 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 it would be quite simple to put a canonical link in the top of that page so that it knows that the original page that this content has come from is the home page or is the main page about commercial or industrial photography. That stops us getting, um, stops our Google juice being transferred from the, the main foundation pages of our website out to pages which are newer, um, very specific pages effectively. The 301 redirect on the opposite hand is when we decide that we're going to delete a page which might be you know, Manchester industrial photographer and we've decided we're going to remove that page from our website and the 301 redirect will be put in place so that if anyone puts in that page or Google still references that page when they click on it it gets taken to a new page which is you know, uh, Manchester industrial photographer rather than the original and um, that's no longer there one thing we don't want is people to get error pages when they come to our website so you know that we should never be in a position that an old link no matter where it is on the internet um, we don't want any old links going to a sorry we can't find the information page so the quick and easy way of doing that Google Search Console will give us a list of references that are currently bouncing and we can just go work our way down that list of references 
and putting those redirects into place again quick and easy on the back end of WordPress. So this was a quick review of gregharding.co.uk. Greg's a commercial and industrial photographer based in Manchester in the United Kingdom and I'm Jamie Morgan. Thank you for tuning in.